Tuesday night at 7, which means it's time for a YouTube live video. I'm just going to double check over here to be sure that I am transmittalating on the interwebs, because otherwise, really, what's the point in doing it? Okay, let's get this opened up. There we go. There we go. So it looks like it's going to work. Yeah. Oh, new pin chat. I don't care about all that. I don't know what that is. Okay. Alrighty, so here is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of. Was anybody able to guess what set I was using? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? All right. This is the Cactus Cuties. It is a set from the mini catalog, the January to June mini catalog. Hey, guys. Appreciate you joining. Sorry I was a little late. Um, I had a logistical issue today, and uh, I'll probably talk about it as we go along, but I'm going to go ahead and get started for you. So it uses Cactus Cuties, which is in the, uh, it's a punch bundle in the mini catalog. Also uses the Macrame 3D embossing folder, which sadly is retiring, but that means you can get it on sale right now for 20% um, off, which makes it $7.20, which is a really good deal. It's an awesome folder and I'm going to miss it. And, oh, by the way, it also uses the amazing and wonderful... I've already used this like 17 times, and I've only had it a week, so it's going to be pretty awesome. This is the Stylish Shapes dies from the new catalog. It's an a la carte die set, which means it's not associated with another stamp or anything else. It's just its own wonderful, wonderful die set, and you're going to want it. So write that down, Stylish Shapes, okay? Hey, everybody. Appreciate you coming. Thank you so much for being patient and waiting for me. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I did just... I mean, literally, I ran in the door and hit start plus start the video. So we're going to see if I did a good job prepping before we went over to our friends for uh, dinner tonight. So here we go. I have got a piece of early espresso, and this is going to be my card front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the little, uh, yes, what I'm going to do is use the little flower die that is, or flower stamp, that's in the Cactus Cuties set. And I'm going to stamp all over it in Whisper White Craft Ink, okay? Alrighty, hey Pamela from Colorado. And so this is basically, I am creating my own DSP, right? Because no one else's is going to be the same. In fact, mine won't even be the same this time as it was the first time I did it. And I like how it looks. I was a little concerned that the ink would just disappear, but it stays really kind of nicely. I'm, I'm liking how it looks, but it's kind of a subtle color. So not quite tone on tone, but not very, not very jarring either. It doesn't scream at you. So that is kind of fun. Now, I could try to think about where my um, front elements are going to be and not stamp there, but that's like too much work entirely. So I'm just stamping the whole thing. Whisper White ink, this craft ink, it does take a little longer to dry, so you kind of want to be careful, you know, rubbing your fingers over the top of it. And I like to make the flowers a different direction each time I stamp, or as close as I can. You know, nature's kind of random, and yet oddly symmetrical. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know how it does it. So if you have flowers next to each other that are going the same way, I certainly wouldn't stress over it. Oh, Jean, I'm glad you like this set. It's cute. It's one that I had not gotten until just recently, but I'd started seeing some cards made with it, and I thought they were so stinking cute that I decided I needed to have it. And so... Now I do. All right, almost done. And you'll be glad to know this is the only panel that I'm putting 7,000 of these little stamps on. So you won't have to watch me do that anymore. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to clean this off because I'm going to use this little stamp later in our card. Later in our card. Okay. All right. Put this away. They look a little like duck feet. Yes. Hey, Shirley. Nope. YouTube's now on uh, whatever day this is. Saturday. That's right. So now that that's on there, I'm going to adhere this to a Blushing Bride mat. Sure. 
Yes, this is a new bottle, but if you leave it out without the lid on for any length of time, it gets a little like glue plug. So don't be like me. Okay. Here we go. So we'd gone over to our friends for dinner and I looked at my watch. It was quarter to six and we kept talking. And then I looked at my watch and it was 20 to seven. And I'm like, ah! So we go flying out of, the, out of their house, down the driveway, come around a corner and there's like this little Shih Tzu dog in the middle of the road. And he, if you know me at all, you know I wasn't going by that. So we stopped and picked him up, and we called our friends and asked if by any chance they knew who it belonged to, and they said that they thought it was the people whose house he was in front of, actually. But So we picked him up, and he was very happy to be picked up. Finn hasn't gotten a sniff of me yet. He will, and he isn't going to be happy about it, but, you know, it is what it is. He was a very sweet little dog, but it was theirs, and fortunately they were where they could see us and we didn't even have to go knock on their door. Uh-oh, I've only cut three of these. What a doofus. Okay, let me get my uh, let me get my little mini out. So yes, you can see how well I prepared. Oh yes, I prepared so well. You're like, Mary, you prepared so well. How could you have prepared this so well? You've been busy and everything and yet you still prepared it so well. Let me get a piece of cardstock, because I do need four of these. So, well, I'm not going to use this because I don't have all the stuff right here. So let me just um, uh, cut this and emboss it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another one of these largest banners, and then I'm going to emboss it in the macrame 3D embossing folder, okay? And this little lack of preparation has nothing to do with me being gone. It's purely, I forgot that I needed four instead of three. So we can't even blame the dog for this one. It's all me, baby. All me. But if nothing else, it does prove that even people who've been doing this a while mess up, right? Which means if I can do it, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Anything you can do, I can do better. You know you can. Yes, you can. That's a song from a musical. But you know what is weird? I've been hearing that song in my head for years, and yet I have no idea what musical it comes from. Anybody know? Anybody at all? I don't know. All right, so there we go. So I have four of these. They're from Early Espresso, and I just cut them out. They're the, the largest die of the banner shape in stylish shapes and embossed in the macrame embossing folder. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack them on my card front, and I'm going to stagger them a little bit, which means I'm going to put this one edged that way. And then the next one will be cheated that direction. And then back to the left and finally back to the right. And I'm just kind of trying to make them equidistant up and down the card front. So this tones down that not very bright background to begin with. Uh, and my year 11 is already in trouble after one term. I'm not actually sure. Is it Annie, get your gun? There you go. Thank you for that. Now, at least when I have that earworm in my ear, I'll know where it's from. All right, so just using some liquid glue. I like liquid glue, especially when I'm using one of these heavily embossed pieces because it gets in the nooks and the crannies, both the nooks and the crannies. All right, so to build our little scene, our little cactus scene, I have the next to largest circle die from Stylish Shapes, and that's going to sit here. And then I've cut a bunch of cacti. So let's talk about what I cut. These are all stamped in soft sea foam, and I cut the, uh, I believe this is the Cigarro, I'm not sure, and then we have a barrel cactus. And these I cut, uh, this one I fussy cut because it doesn't go with the punch, so I just I just stamped it and fussy cut it. And then the barrel and his little ears, I um, 
stamped and then cut with the punch. And we're gonna go like this. Now, I'm true confession time. I am not a cactusologist, so I totally do not know what a cactus would look like in the wild. So I used the, the <laughs> I used the uh, the samples, the cactuses that the that the demonstrators put in the uh, the Stampin' Up designers, because you know they did a really good job with it. All right, so these are going to be like this, and then I've got some little flowers in so saffron. And these also are in the punch. So the punch is kind of fun. It punches out the barrel cactus and the little barrel cactus ears, and it punches out um, the <clears throat> one of the pots and the flower, okay? Do you guys like punches? I like punches. I am a punch fan. And then these are gonna go kind of on the top. And I actually put them together off of my, um, off of my, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Can anyone come up with it? Off of the card, so that they would be easy to put on the card when I got to that point. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to take and put a little bit of liquid glue right at the tip of each of these little ear guys. The little ear guys. Not a lot of liquid glue. You don't need a lot of liquid glue. You never, ever need a lot of liquid glue. Trust me on that, okay? Because it squishes, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. I know, I love punches too. Oh, your autumn and Easter break. Okay, gotcha. Well, I hope you have a good vacation. Or are you just ready, all ready for your kids to go back to school? This is what I'm never sure of. All right, so I'm just gonna hear that like that. Now, if I had been home five minutes earlier, I probably would have pulled out my, my silicone mat to do this on. So use your silicone mat. It'll be much easier, I promise. And then we'll do the same with the little flowers. Like so. And really, you really don't need a lot of this here because you're also gonna use a dimensional and you're gonna use that as to also adhere them together. But this is just kind of like, this is like tacking them into place, like a little tack weld. Okay. And then we'll, uh, I'm gonna put it behind like I did on the other ones. All right. By doing this, it makes it really, really easy to put dimensionals on it and then kind of build your, your little, your little cactus scene, okay? So this guy is already a cactus. All he needs now is a couple of little flowers, some flowers. I like the colors. I don't know that these cactus would ever come in soft sea foam in, in real life, but I think they're pretty cute like this, really. I like them. And obviously this is after, have, has any of you, have any of you ever been in the high desert right after it's rained? It is the most wonderful smelling place ever, ever. And rainstorms in the high desert are spectacular because they're usually thunderstorms, which can be a little scary, but but they're really gorgeous. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do before we get started too far down the line is I'm going to stamp another one of the um, little pots and I'm gonna stamp him in so saffron and give him a quick fussy cut. And then we will be ready to go. And this is a this is a piece where I messed up, so I'm just using the uh, the extra for my spot. And I will cut it out with some skizzas from skizzas. I had a friend who was in the uh, she was going to be in a musical in her high school, and this was her song. That was her song. And so she and her mother and I would do some shopping. It was when I was at one of my trainings in Altus, and they were there. He was, ah, uh, he was the wing commander, maybe. I'm not sure. We'd gone shopping, and I could remember Jessica singing that song in the back seat because she was practicing for the part. And so that was where I first heard that song. I know, you guys are so excited about that. I know, right? Okay, you're like, Mary, shut up and make a card, for goodness sake. 
Okay, dokage. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm going to take this white um, circle. I'm gonna do it right side up, not wrong side down. And I'm going to adhere it to my card front with some dimensionales so that it is a pop it up. So it is a pop it up. Alrighty. Are you guys having a good weekend? It has been chilly here. We did not plant any more plants today inside, outside because we spend a little time covering everything again in anticipation of a chill, another chill. It's gonna be chilly overnight. So about the time we, uh, you know, think it might be a good idea to <laughs> put out the last of the plants, they're like, ah, protect your tender vegetables, okay. Do I cut my strip? Yes, I do. I do. Um, and I will be happy to show you that at the end if you would like. But basically what I do is I turn them this direction and I cut like so. If you turn this direction, it makes it very difficult to cut them. So the, by this direction, I mean one of the straight edges is, is perpendicular to your scissors, okay? So you can see, and I just do that like so. I do it um, because my friend Amy guilted me into it, finally. And because actually they're really handy this size. And I can use more of them without using more of them. Do you know what I mean? So I always feel like I'm, I'm conserving dimensionals. Now the dimensional workers of the world don't like that because I used to keep them in, in you know, paychecks, but I have to do what I have to do. Okay, so I've just adhered the little early espresso pot to that guy, and I'm gonna do the same here with my So Saffron Fussy Cut. Remember, this guy punched, this guy fussy cut, and he is about ready to overflow his pot. He probably needs a new pot, okay? But now they both have their doohickeys, by which I mean pots. And so I can kind of get an idea how things are gonna look by dry fitting. I stamped the sentiment in Blushing Bride and I cut it out with the smallest of the banners in stylish shapes. And it's gonna go like right there with a little bow. So let's go ahead and get these adhered. I'm gonna put some dimensionals under these little guys cause they stick out and need a little bit of support. Oop. So there we go. And if you put it right there, you see how I'm, I'm also catching that little flower to give it just a little more adhering help. It's not like it's gonna get a lot of activity, so you don't have to reinforce it like you would a three-dimensional card or something like that. That's right, I am conserving money and dimensionals. That's right, so that there's, if there's ever a dimensional shortage in the world, it will not be my fault. Okay, so then I will Put a little bit of liquid glue here and stick it on like so. I like how it pops against that early espresso background, don't you? And actually, I should have put a little dimensional right there, so I'm gonna stick one under there using my tweezers. Well, I did pull the trigger on a new um, super combo holder that holds my ink pads and the refills and the markers and the Stampin' Blends all together. So I'm excited for that to come. I don't know, is it is it or is it not true that crafters enjoy playing with the organizational structures in their craft room almost as much as they like making cards? All right, this little guy is popped on with uh, dimensionals. And this one may need to be a little bit, it's actually, that's okay. We'll make him be up there, okay? And he's probably gonna want a double stack of dimensionals because he's gonna hang over the edge. So I'm gonna put a double stack right here and you'll see why in just a hot second. Okay, okay. Now with all those on, but not uncovered. I'm just doing a quick check to be sure that these guys are fitting where I want them to, and they are. So that looks perfect. I'll take it. I'll take perfect fit for a thousand, Bob. 
Actually, that would have been Alec Trebek. Rest in peace, man. All righty. Goodness gracious, come off of there. Come off of there. And then we'll set him down like so. Done. Okay, before I do another thing, because it would be too early. Yes, we like to look at it, touch it, organize it. That's okay, Debbie. It's okay you were late. I was late too. It's a, it's Saturday. It's that kind of day. So I've got some white baker's twine, and I'm just going to double it up like that. And tie a bow of the simple variety. And we'll see how simple it is in about two seconds, right? You'd be like, yeah, Mary, that wasn't that simple because it took you 12 tries to get it how you wanted it. But I'm actually going to take that as a good, a good bow. And it is going to go, I think that was a Shih Tzu hair that just fell off my shirt. Boy, that little dog, he would have gotten in our car. Well, he did get in our car because we drove around the, around the driveway to find the, the erstwhile owner people. But he was just sitting in my lap, ready to roll. Like, okay, I'm good. I'm down. Where are you taking me? I don't know how I ended up out here in the road. But he was literally standing in front of the car, not moving. No, no. He's like, pick me up now, Mom. Pick, Ladies, pick me up. Just pick me up. I, I don't actually know why or how I got here. I probably came through that fence right there, but I don't know how. And I need you to save me because he was way too little to be out. He was too little. But, you know, a person could get really, could get, could get kind of, kind of hooked on a small dog that you could just pick up and hold in your lap really easy like that. Finn would not have been impressed, but, well, he might have had to share if we couldn't have found his home. I am glad we did find his home, though, because I really don't want another dog. I'm very happy with our dynamic right now, and Finn really likes being an only child. I know for sure, for sure. <laughs> If I know you, you'll have a use for your old storage units. You can never have enough. Oh, uh, gosh. I think I'm going to I'm gonna tote them up to the retreat in October with our team and see if I can foist them off on somebody who's got a car because they're really too heavy to ship, way too heavy to ship. All right, so I've just put a couple of dimensionals, and you can see I've cheated them over to this side, this side, because this side's gonna go over my bow and it doesn't need to have anything else. Let me make sure it's kind of straight, sort of straight, a little bit straight. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, now I have got some classic matte dots and I'm gonna give these little cactus people a few of them. And I totally stole this from the samples in the catalog because I probably never would have come up with this on my own. I'm I'm really just not that creative. I wouldn't have thought about giving them these little dots, but they're really cute, and I like them. So I'm doing it a Dan. Okay, put some there, and then a couple more over on this little barrel guy. There we go. And there's our card front. Isn't that so cute? It's so, dare I say it, cactus cutie. It's a cactus cutie. Okay. Now, let's play with the inside a little bit, and you're going to see how fun this set is to stamp with to make these cactuses. Cactuses. The cactuses are, I'm going to start with the very cute, you're on, hope your day is on point. I'm going to stamp it in Blushing Bride, right in the middle. Boy, did I get ink all over that block, or what? Not or what, it's definitely all over the block. So I'm gonna be really careful to not rock the boat. Okay, there we go. And now I'm gonna clean this, just in case I do something goofy, like drop it on my card. All right, and then I'll um, close this for now. And I'm gonna get out my uh, Cigaro. I don't, I'm sure, saguaro, that's probably closer to how you say it, or it's not even a little bit close, I don't know. And I'm gonna stamp him down in the corner in soft sea foam. One thing I will tell you is, um, this has kind of got a beveled edge, so 
unless you want there to be a gap between the bottom of that image and the bottom of the card, then um, cheat down a little bit. So I'm overlapping the bottom of the card stock because I don't want that gap there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my little flower and I'm going to stamp him. I'm going to wipe my hand off because I just stuck it in that ink pad. Okay. Oh, not, not blushing bride. I want the yellow flowers for this. And I'm just going to give these a little stamp, a little jaunty stamp here. I just think this is so cute. I really cannot believe it took me so long to get this set. What a dork. And then I'll put him there like that. Okay. And this can sit aside because I'm going to use him again in just a minute. And now I will Ah, go have a good time with your class, Jacqueline. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Okie doke. Enjoy the game. What time will Murray show start around our daylight say? Oh, I know. Daylight savings time is crazy, isn't it? I wish they would just pick a time and stay there. I heard tell that maybe that was happening, but I'm not holding out hope. I think they're just teasing us. All right, so we've got our Blushing Bride mat, and I'm going to put it inside my So Saffron card base, which is your basic size one, you know, the one you usually make. We'll do that with a little liquid glue. All righty. Isn't this a pretty color combination? Kind of springy. Kind of springy like the desert after the rain. It looks kind of springy. And then I'll pop this on with some dimensionals. Look at that, a stray dimensional cover. Who would have thunk it? Huh, weird. I never see dimensional covers just floating around the house. That just doesn't ever happen. I know. They had, uh, they didn't, we had cactuses when I was at, or cacti, sorry, when we had, when I was at Edwards, but we didn't see a lot of them on the base where we were. Mostly you saw Joshua trees, lots and lots of Joshua trees. I do like the desert after a rainstorm. There's just, oof, nothing smells as good as that, really. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, oop. Come off of there. Do you see him trying to trying to stay on his dimensional? That's what I call loyal. Alrighty, and pop him on, and there we go. There's our card. So let's go ahead quick and decorate an envelope. I'm gonna do this without any DSP. Look, Ma, no DSP, not anywhere. No DSP. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Okay, so. Let's do a cactus. I don't, I know, I, the worst possible thing is to say, okay, well, you guys change, but you guys don't. I've told the story about traveling to Arizona, and when I got to the hotel, one of my phones had changed time, and one hadn't, so I wasn't really sure what time it was, and then the clock in the hotel room was a different time entirely, so I was like, I really have no idea. So I I called the front desk and I said, okay, this is a really stupid sounding question, but could you tell me what time it is? Do you guys, are you on central time? Are you on, you know, mountain time? What are you on Pacific time? What are you on? She literally didn't know. She had to ask someone what time it was there. And I was like, well, okay, if the people who live here don't know what time it is, how are the people who visit? Cactuses is right? That's that's weird. I did not know that, but thank you for sharing it. I appreciate you telling me so. All right, now I'm going to put the yellow flowers on the front. Like so. And then on my flappa, I'm going to stampa some little other ones. Some little other ones. And it's going to be these other ones right here. These little other one. This little other one right here. And I'm going to stamp it all over the flap. Oh, careful. Like this. And 
will go all over and then I'm gonna add some flowers in pink and yellow, both, both pink and yellow. Equal opportunity stamper. Mm -hmm. Like that. And I'm gonna start with the yellow so I don't have to uh, clean my stamp set right now. And because I have the yellow open. So I'm just gonna do a few kind of randomly Like that. And obviously, if you were doing this, you could, you know, make it any of the colors that you liked. The most of. I'm going to put him right there like that. Uh, let's see. I think I'll put one more right there. And then I'm going to clean my stamp set and close my ink pad and change out to my Blushing Bride ink pad and add the little flowers to the other guys. Like this. I'm gonna get that little piece off of there because it's making little spots. Get off of there. Okay. So, even if you don't use DSP on your card, don't take that as a good reason to not decorate your envelope flap. Do something different. Like that. Oh, there's one needs one. Okay, and there you go. And that, as they say in some industry somewhere, yes, these are duckfoot cactuses. You've never heard of them? It's a rare one, not seen everywhere, but sometimes. And there we go. So Cactus Cuties, really, really cute. Um, you will really enjoy it. And the Macrame 3D embossing folder is on sale right now, okay, until it goes away, either because it runs out or because we hit the uh, 2nd of May and the last chance products go away. So be sure to get Macrame. It's really, really awesome. And... Stylish shapes. I don't think I need to say any more about it. Just get it, okay? Just so you know, in case you're interested, I am doing a paper share. I'll be posting that on Monday, so you'll be able to see what's involved in it and get signed up so that we can get your share on the way come the 3rd of May. All right, guys, appreciate you. I appreciate your patience and letting me be a little late, and um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you next week. Thanks. <laughs>